Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Hi guys, and welcome to another Fool of the Week. And this week's Fool is Daniel Hannan, conservative and hardline Brexiteer. Which I find strange because he doesn't actually understand Brexit. And I'm going to demonstrate that in a moment. He, um, in this video, he's going to criticize the Northern Ireland Protocol, obviously not understanding it and by extension, the Good Friday Agreement, and he doesn't understand the Good Friday Agreement either. But before we get to the video, I want to show you a bit of information about him. So this is Daniel Hannan's Wikipedia page. It says, Hannan, being one of the founders of the Vote Leave campaign, was at the forefront of the 2016 referendum on membership of the European Union. Described in The Guardian as the man who brought you Brexit, the Financial Times described his Oxford campaign for an independent Britain as the start of the Brexit movement. At the bottom it says here, and this is very this is very interesting. In an interview in 2015, Hannan asserted that absolutely nobody is talking about threatening our place in the single market. <laughs> How has this guy still been wheeled out in front of a camera? After a statement like that, nobody is threatening our place in the single market. The UK, if you don't know, is no longer a member of the single market. It's no longer in the single market. So that was either a lie or he didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Now, he's also criticised the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, I want to show you a quote. Um, it says here, uh, writing in the Daily Telegraph, pro-Brexit, pro-Tory newspaper, Hannan has argued that while the Good Friday Agreement is often spoken in quasi-religious terms, its flaws have become clearer over time. Hannan's account of the Good Friday Agreement has been criticised as factually inaccurate and reckless. He doesn't care about people in Northern Ireland and he doesn't understand Brexit. But the BBC want to hear him speak for some reason. So let's hear what he had to say. Well, the, the, the Northern Ireland Protocol is based on an absurd proposition which is that checks between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland are undermining the Good Friday Agreement, maybe even threatening the peace, whereas checks on goods between Northern Ireland and Great Britain are just fine and dandy. He doesn't understand the Good Friday Agreement because in, there is no reference, and I talked about this before, there's no reference in the Good Friday Agreement about a border between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. So, but, but even if that were the case, he voted for this. He campaigned for this. He wanted this. He won it. Why is he complaining? You won. Get over it. You got your Brexit. But unfortunately, people like myself in the run up to the, uh, the vote and after the vote were saying Northern Ireland is going to be a problem because it's of because of the Good Friday Agreement. You're going to have, Brexit and the Good Friday Agreement are going to come into conflict. And every time it was brought up, the response from Brexiteers was stop engaging in Project Fear. And here we are. Now, you only have to state that to see that it is not a sustainable position. We, we need to sort this out. This isn't just a question of symbolism. Of, uh... We need to sort this out. OK, what is what are you presenting as a, an alternative? Nothing. He's like the DUP. This is bad. Okay, what do you want as an alternative? Um, this is bad. Okay, what can we do in, instead? This is bad. This is all they can say. Absolutely useless. Criticizing the protocol, saying it should be scrapped, but not actually presenting an alternative, something that would actually work. Because there is nothing else. There, as I said before, there was a border in the Irish Sea, a border on the island of Ireland, or the UK as a whole, within the single market and the customs union. But Brexiteers like Daniel didn't want that last one. So we had two options left. And I wish the journalists would ask him this. What are you suggesting? Tell us, lay it out on the table so we can look at it. But of course he doesn't because he has no ideas. Uh, of sovereignty, it's a question of, of real difficulties for people of both communities and both traditions in Northern Ireland who are having completely needless restrictions on their economic activity. Which right. are absolutely not need. Let to not need. But you wanted this. This is what you wanted. You voted and you campaigned for this. Now, I don't know if Daniel knew 
that the UK would leave the single market and the customs union. If he didn't know and he campaigned for it, isn't that a big mistake? Isn't that a big problem on his uh, on his side? If he didn't know about this or was he lying to the public and saying, no, no, we're not going to be um, leaving the single market? Secure the well, let Siobhan, Siobhan is trying to respond to you. I'll try and let you um, talk to each other a little bit as far as we can, Siobhan. Yeah. But but sorry, Dan, but it is what the government signed up to. It's what this... <laughs> exactly. This is what the government signed up to. This is what your party wanted. The Conservatives wanted Brexit done. They got Brexit done and Brexiteers are still complaining. This government signed up to, it's part of the agreement as it currently stands. We can't wish it away. It's there. And this is what is agreed. And we have to find a way to come to some sort of agreement. Because the cost of not to cause not just bad faith uh, between uh, uh, Britain and the EU, but it causes into question our, our discussions with the Biden administration in America. And it, and it, and it causes unprecedented possible oh. mayhem in, in Ireland. Dan and it breaks international law. Th that's quite important as well. But Daniel Hanna doesn't care about the people of Northern Ireland. He doesn't care about peace in Northern Ireland. At the end of the day, I don't think he cares about trade either with Northern Ireland. He just, I think he's, he wants to be relevant. And he's talking about this because he wants to remain relevant. Huh? Sorry, but once again, to make a mistake like this one here, um, let me find it once again campaign to leave in 2015 asserting that absolutely nobody is talking about threatening our place in the single market that statement alone should be enough for daniel hannon to go away and be very quiet and never speak again <laughs> in public how is it possible that daniel hannon has been rolled out onto the bbc to talk about things when he's made such a mistake as this one it's either a mistake or a lie I, I'd like to actually ask Daniel, which is it? Was, when you said in 2015 about the single market, was it a lie or was it a mistake? If it was a lie, then we shouldn't be hearing from you any longer. You should apologize and go away. If it was a mistake, then you should shut the hell up about Brexit. Well, first of all, the Northern Ireland Protocol, the idea that Northern Ireland should remain under EU jurisdiction for economic purposes was not tabled in the aftermath of the Brexit vote. <laughs> it was not part of the Brexit vote or tabled after the Brexit vote. Was leaving the single market part of the Brexit vote? Because it was it was unthinkable that the United Kingdom would just kind of renounce its interest in part of it. <laughs> in the same way, it was unthinkable that we would leave the single market. Its own territory. The idea was only put on the table in late 2017 in response to the change in numbers in the House of Commons. So when... When there was a change in the House of Commons, that's when Northern Ireland became a problem. Really? Does he think people are that stupid? It's yeah. It's like we only came, we, Northern Ireland became an issue uh, when when the, there was a change in the House of Commons. Does anyone actually believe him? As a result of the 2017 election, the EU, I think, saw an opportunity uh, as they sought to reverse Brexit altogether. And and sorry please please go away daniel hannan please you're an idiot you're embarrassing yourself you're still harking on about the eu didn't want us to leave and the eu was trying to stop us from leaving and the eu was putting roadblocks in the way i have nothing more else to say about this guys daniel hannan is the fool of the week see you next week for another fool and always your comments are greatly appreciated I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?